to each one of you in this beautiful Monday morning and welcome to God's Word for today devotional. We will read now 1 Peter 3, 19-22 for our text for today, but this is not an easy text to read and understand, but nevertheless, this is the Word of God and we will learn principles and truth here that can encourage our hearts for today. Let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 19. To 22, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safety, safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, was gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Now, as I said earlier, this is not an easy text or verses to understand, but nevertheless, we can glean spiritual truth from here. But the main subject here that we can learn in we can embrace in our hearts is that our God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is alive and victorious. He is our encouragement. Peter declared previously in verse 18 that he was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. He was made alive in the spirit. So Jesus rose again from the dead. And he continued here in verse 19 that he went to the spirits of prison. Now, this really will uh, give us some, some um, asking. What do you mean by spirits of prison? Where several interpretations of what this might mean. One view is that the verse is simply describing Jesus' physical resurrection from the dead. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is finished. And when he said to to the thief that today will be with me in paradise. Salvation was completed at the cross when he died and that he promised to the criminal that who, who trusted him, who believed in him, that he will be with him in that very moment when he's going to die in paradise or in heaven. So that this in interpretation seems possible and that it just means generally as physical resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is another view, and that, that this means that it describes a spiritual resurrection, which happened before his physical resurrection. So there is a spiritual resurrection of Christ, according to this view, which happened before his physical resurrection on that first Easter Sunday. So Jesus, according to them, is in a spiritual form. He was alive and proclaiming to the spirits in prison before returning to physical life. Remember that three days, you know, when Peter, when, when the Lord Jesus cried, Christ died on Friday afternoon. So he resurrected three days later or in, on Sunday morning, early mo Sunday morning. So this is how they describe that Jesus was in spiritual form, went into the spirits in prison to proclaim to them, and then declared his victory over death to the fallen angels now in prison who disobeyed God during the time, which we can see in verse 20. This might be also another possible reason. Another persistent view, although this is not so biblically um, supportable, is that Jesus traveled in spirit form after his death and before his resurrection to proclaim something to those in Hades or hell who died before during the flood. 
wow, all of these views raised me me add more questions and rather than answer our questions isn't isn't it the bottom line is that we just don't know for sure what peter means by these verses what we don't know is that jesus was dead and then made alive that he suffered and then was made victorious by the father forever so let's not be empathic and be dogmatic but just have this truth that Jesus was truly uh, crucified and, and died and he was undoubtedly buried. And then he, he made the most significant miracle ever since that he rose from the dead and never to live again. And that is our our encouragement for today, that Jesus is alive. Peter moved on further in verse 21, and this is another controversial verse. He talks about baptism here. Peter is not suggesting that the act of being baptized saves a person from eternity. We know that. In the other passages of the scripture, we know that our salvation is only by grace through faith alone. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We are not saved because of what we do, including the rites of baptis baptism. Instead, we have to take this verse as a whole because if we take this verse as a whole, it seems to us that Peter is saying that the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead saves us. It's not baptism, but the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in the resurrection which Christians publicly express their faith during baptism. And that's the beauty of baptism. You are buried and you rose again with, with Christ. This is supported by Peter's inclusion of the phrase, which corresponds to this, suggesting a parallel rather than an identical purpose. So the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ which is the hallmark, the foundation of our faith, is paralleled by our baptism when we rose from the water. It is a parallel truth. It is symbolized by the baptism. So baptism does not say, because the word saves also here does not necessarily refer to eternal salvation at all. Instead, Peter is saying that the act of publicly identifying ourselves with Christ through baptism does save us from being tempted to hide our faith to avoid the suffering and persecution of Christians. In other words, during the time of Peter, when a Christian believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and he obeyed in the waters of baptism, he is expressing his courage. He is not afraid to hide his faith in order to avoid suffering and persecution of Christians. Now, this is consistent to what Peter has been talking about in this chapter, about the suffering of Christ and how to identify with his suffering boldly. So, let me just summarize our thought for today. Let me just encourage each one of us that Jesus, who died for sins once for all, made alive by the Spirit. And even in this difficult verses that we have read, one thing for certain is that He is alive. He did not remain at the grave. He is our victorious God, and we hold on unto that. We live because He lives. We have the certainty of our salvation because of the certainty of Christ's resurrection. We have this very important truth, the anchor and the foundation of our faith, that Jesus did not remain at the grave, but rose from the grave. Maybe that we will be able to say with Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but, be, but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory in Christ. We pray that this truth will remain in our hearts even today and will encourage us. Let us pray together. Thank you, Lord, for today, even for these very difficult verses that we have read. Lord, secret things really belong to you. And 
we don't need to grapple the things that we cannot understand, but just cherish and treasure for the things that are clear in the Bible. We thank you that the truth of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is un, undeniable. Jesus is the one only in history who was crucified and rose again. The tomb was empty and then he was seen by a lot of witnesses. Thank you, Lord, that we have a solid foundation in Christ's resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen.